A fox spirit must end the life of a human in order to achieve the immortality that he ever so desires, turning him into a nine-tailed fox spirit. However, things are not as simple as he once thought, because that person will become the best friend he's never had. Today I'm going to recap a Chinese fantasy, an adventure film called Soul Snatcher, released in 2020. The story begins 500 years ago, with a little fox trying to chase a frog. While chasing the frog he accidentally slips and is now clinging onto the edge of the cliff. Seeing that the fox is about to fall, a young boy quickly ran over to help the fox and bring it back to safety. But right after he pulls him up, he also tripped over on the rocks and is now holding on to the brink of the cliff. The fox tries to pull him back up using his paws, but his sharp claws scratch his hand, making him lose his grip and unfortunately he can't hold on any longer and falls to the ground. The fox quickly rushes down to help him, but he's not moving, and the fox starts crying and sheds a tear for him, and stayed with him on the side of the road. The movie then cuts to 500 years later, where a tribe of fox spirits who are in human form, all gather to participate in an exam held by the leader who is the legendary nine-tailed white fox. They all arrive here one by one, at the invitation of the nine-tailed white fox and were all invited, except from one of the foxes named Thirteen Bai, who is the main protagonist of the movie. Everyone shows their stone ticket to the commander, but Bai doesn't have the correct ticket, and thus making him ineligible to get in. All the others start laughing and call him a half-breed fox and insult him. However Bai is still curious and wants to find out what's going on, so he finds a way to sneak in. Once the ceremony begins, the white nine-tailed fox transforms into an old man, who is the leader of the fox spirits and welcomes everyone to the gathering. The leader explains that today will be the day they'll learn how to become an immortal nine-tailed fox, but first they must understand the souls of elixirs. After, the older students who have already got an elixir begin to explain to the leader about how they managed to obtain their first elixir. Elixirs are something that every fox must obtain in order to transform into a fox with more than one tail, and the color of your elixir will represent your power. The only way to obtain these elixirs is from certain human bodies called the clamon. But not every human has it, as they were provided by particular volunteers in the deserved time. So far, most of the students have only obtained the black elixir, which isn't very powerful. But one of the students, named Azzy, has managed to obtain the red elixir. She explains that in order to obtain the red elixir, she disguised herself as a human's wife and pretended to be ill and almost died. So the husband, who was her clamon, willingly volunteered to give her his elixir. As a result, she gets appreciated by the master for her deceiving skills and is now a five-tailed fox spirit. After, the leader announces that on the 15th day of the next month, there will be an opportunity occurring, which only happens every 1,000 years, which is to obtain the white elixir, which can turn you into the immortal nine-tailed fox, and you will become one of the first-class fox spirits. To take part in the quest for the white elixir, the leader calls upon the chosen young fox spirits to place their hand on the furnace which will show them the symbol of their clamon. So when they go back to the human world, they know what to look for. However the furnace won't start up, because a fox spirit is missing from the group, and that fox is Bai. At this moment, Bai shouts out to the leader and begs to let him join. But instead they all begin to laugh at him, as he's known to just be a half-breed fox, without any true power as a fox spirit. The leaders don't want him to join, but the furnace begins to glow up as Bai approaches it, so he was eventually allowed to take part. Once they place their hand on the furnace, it reveals a mark on their hand which represents their clamon. However Bai doesn't receive a mark, he tries to do it over and over but still nothing happened. But after some time the furnace forced his hand onto the stone, and he received a mark. However Bai's mark is incomplete, only showing a pair of long ears. At this moment everyone leaves the ceremony, and Bai sits down with the leader who tells him that his mark is incomplete and there's a good chance he will fail when returning to the human world, and adds that it will be very dangerous for him to take part in the quest to get the white elixir, and could result in him dying as he is a weak fox compared to the others. Bai asks the leader why he's not like the other foxes, and then the leader explains to him that this is because in his past life he was originally an immortal fox from heaven, and born on the spiritual mountains but he was exiled to this mundane world but he's always been destined to be an immortal fox. However the leader begins to laugh and told Bai he was only joking. He then reveals that Bai was the fox from 500 years ago, and told him he's just a half-breed fox who he found on the side of the road crying over a human boy. And when he saw this he brought him to the spirit realm. He tells Bai that he's bound to fail the task because he's a half-breed fox, and warns him to be extra careful as he could end up turning back into his original form when he first found him. 
Because of this, the leader gives Bai a special blade to defend himself, and right after Bai pretends to hug the old man but he done this for an opportunity to take the communications device from the leader, called the Wuxi. This device can help Bai find the elixirs faster and works as a compass for information, but it can also talk to him. And the voice inside it is a girl called Wuxi and told Bai to return the device, but he doesn't care to listen and still runs away with it. After Bai leaves, the co-leader shows some corpses to the leader and tells him that several of the foxes have been dying while trying to take their elixir in the human world. After seeing this, the leader begins worrying about Bai and the other foxes in the human world, so he orders the co-leader to watch over Bai during his quest. After, Bai goes to the human world and arrives at a small village where he's eating some food in a restaurant. There we see a young traveling scholar named Zai Jin, who is looking for his brother in the painting. Zai Jin goes around asking people if they have information about his brother, until he stumbles across Bai in the restaurant. However, Bai ignores Zai Jin when he approaches him, as he's not interested and continues enjoying his food, thus making Zai Jin leave. But while he's leaving, the Wuxi communications device tells Bai that his clamon is nearby, who has the elixir. The Wuxi reminds him of his mark on his hand stating that the target must have long ears, so he starts searching around to see if he can spot the clamon. However, Bai gets distracted by an old man who is doing a presentation where he heals people from diseases. He uses some kind of magic and has several demon souls in the paintings. The elder cuts the leg of the demon painting and uses the blood from it to cure the boy. After seeing this, Bai is shocked and searches elsewhere for his target as he thinks the elder might feel his presence and mistake him for a demon. At this moment, Bai bumps into Zai Jin again making him fall into the donkey's stables. This causes Zai Jin's donkey to be scared and runs away, but when his donkey returns back to him, he crashes into Bai and starts to run out of the town while taking Bai with him. After seeing this, Zai Jin hurries to pursue his donkey, and while doing so, the elder who was curing people with demon blood uses magic to cast a protection spell to hide inside Zai Jin's body. We then cut to Bai who has been taken to the forest and when Zai Jin arrives he asks him where his donkey is. But Bai replies saying it ran off into the forest and doesn't know where it is. But Zai Jin continues to chase after Bai as he wants to know what happened to his donkey. The two of them run until they get exhausted and they come to realize that they're now lost in the forest. There they come across an abandoned house and decide to stay there for the night. And Bai promises he will find the donkey tomorrow. While discussing about Zai Jin's donkey, it reminded him about his mark which has the long ears, so he now figures out that Zai Jin is his target. After that, the two of them stay in the house together for the night, and they get to know one another. Bai comes to realize that Zai Jin was traveling to the capital city to take the imperial exam to become an official. So Bai tries to make friends with Zai Jin, saying he will accompany him along the way to the city, and they can take the exam together. However, Zai Jin is still angry with him because he lost his donkey. Zai Jin explains to Bai that the donkey belonged to his older brother Daoron, who went missing, and explains that his brother went to the city to take the exam a long time ago, but never came home and is now missing. Later that night, Bai has enough reason to believe he's the one with the white elixir and is ready to kill Zai Jin. However, right at that moment, the co-leader who was sent by the leader suddenly appeared and warned him about the right way of obtaining the elixirs, which is to get the human to volunteer to give it up out of love or respect for you, and explains how instead of killing him, he needs to gain his friendship and loyalty. The co-leader told him he can start by finding his beloved donkey. The next day the donkey was found, and Bai pretends he found it. But in fact this is actually the co-leader who disguised himself as the donkey. After, Zai Jin is relieved and full of happiness, so Bai asks him if they can travel together to the capital and take the exam together. Zai Jin agrees, and they begin their journey. While traveling, they come across a strange town full of mist. Soon they realize that before the exam there is an academy that prepares you for it. When they arrive the owner who is a mysterious looking man, invites them inside to stay at the guest house. There they see many others who are also taking the prep to prepare for the exam. Later that night, Zai Jin heard some noises and wakes up, and when he goes outside he sees a small frog. The small demon frog lured him out and was laying gold nuggets on the floor. Zai Jin follows the gold until he saw the guest house owner who told him to look into the pond. But when he does, the owner immediately attacked him and turns his vision to make him see what the demon wants him to see. When he looks around he sees many of the scholars who have been killed by the frog demon and knows he could be next. The giant frog starts to attack him with his tongue until he catches him and nearly consumed him. But luckily Bai shows up just in time to save him. Even though Bai tries to save him, the frog demon is too strong, 
and they aren't a match for the giant toad. At this moment, Bai decides to sacrifice his life for his friend Zai Jin, because one death is better than the two of them. After a shock, Zai Jin manages to escape, but we learn that the demon frog is actually a friend of Bai's, and they plan this all out to make Zai Jin scared, so he will give his elixir to him voluntarily. They think the plan worked, however, Zai Jin suddenly came back and instead of giving up his elixir in exchange for Bai's life, he instead tries stopping the demon frog and attempts at saving Bai. When they see Zai Jin heading back over, he told the owner to transform back into the giant frog, and Bai hides back inside and acts like he was really eaten by the toad. This time, Zai Jin has a flaming torch and many bombs and threaten the demon frog. Zai Jin explains how he will die with Bai if he doesn't spit him back out. Meanwhile, the frog tries to absorb him using a gasp of wind, but the frog demon ends up absorbing the torch and the bombs causing a huge blast and spits out Bai who goes flying into the air. Bai is laying unconscious and almost transforms into his fox spirit form, but the co-leader arrives and knocked out Zai Jin before he gets a closer look. After, the co-leader takes Zai Jin on a boat while he's still unconscious, and they're also with the man who turned into the demon frog. He then blames Bai and the frog about their dumb plan in order to take Zai Jin's elixir, and reminds Bai that the elixir inside Zai Jin's body could end up being black, so what they are planning could all go wrong. The co-leader suggested Bai should take Zai Jin to the capital city where there is a girl who could reveal the color of Zai Jin's elixir. Soon after, Zai Jin awakes, and Bai thinks it's best to reveal his true identity, and reveals to Zai Jin that he's actually a fox spirit. He tells him not to be afraid, and promises not to eat him. Zai Jin comes out and starts healing Bai's wounds. On their way there, Zai Jin tells stories about his brother, and explains how he's his role model, so Bai promises to help find him when they arrive at the capital. When they arrive at the city, there are a lot of beautiful women who are gathered there, and Sai Jin is greeted by a boy who directs him to an exclusive building, where apparently someone has been waiting for him for a long time. When he arrives he's greeted by the demon frog, who has disguised himself as a girl, and they tell him his brother is on the second floor of the building waiting for him. He then enters a room where he meets a beautiful ghost named Ying Lion the one who's able to reveal the color of the elixir. Zai Jin is confused by but Ying Lion is very attractive, and she begins flirting with an innocent Zai Jin. However, he knows his limits and refuses to kiss her. She then tries to lure him over and over again until the magic protection spell that the elder put on him attacked Ying Lion. She pretends to be okay, and because Zai Jin is a gentleman he always turns his back to her. But each time he does this the spell is visible to her eyes causing her to be thrown across the room. Ying Lion starts crying because she's failing to get close to him, but Zai Jin thinks she's crying because she thinks that he doesn't love her. However, Zai Jin has already fallen in love with Ying, and states that when he finishes the exam he will be destined to marry her. After he falls asleep, she examines his whole body and when Bai returns she informs him that she found nothing, and couldn't reveal the color of his elixir. After, Ying Lion is tortured by the co-leader who is mad that she didn't finish her mission. It turns out that her soul is kept inside the lotus and the master has full control over it. The next morning Bai and Sai Jin arrive at the city where the ultimate examination will take place, however he is nervous as only a few of them will be chosen to pass the exam. Later before the exam starts he asks people about his brother Deoran in the painting. Later at night all the candidates start registering themselves for the exam, however they are all searched thoroughly to make sure no one is cheating. The following day, all the candidates enter the exam room and prepare themselves. The exam begins and it goes on until midnight, and suddenly a man who is doing the exam claims he sees ghosts and distracts other examiners so they bring him out of the class. Moments later, the ghosting lion appears and this time pulls by his soul out of his body. She tells him that there is an evil ghost lurking in the room who will capture a bunch of students' souls, including Zai Jin's. She explains to Bai that this will be the perfect time to kill Zai Jin and obtain his elixir, and in exchange for helping Bai, he will return the favor and steal the lotus from the co-leader and set her free. Bai agrees with the plan and the evil ghost takes Zai Jin's soul from his body. Ying Lian explains to Bai that he must kill Zai Jin while his soul is free from his body so the quality of the elixir won't be affected. When Zai Jin looks around he finally meets his brother Daoran, but when he tries to talk to him it turns out that his brother Daoran is the evil ghost. He tries to attack Zai Jin, but Bai sees this and can't help but to save his best friend, and quickly runs over to save him, even though this was the perfect opportunity to kill him and obtain the white elixir so he can become an immortal. 
but he still doesn't do it. After, Zai Jin's brother casts a spell trapping both of them inside the walls made of letters. Then we see a black hole which absorbs Zai Jin and the Wuxi device tells Bai that he should let him go, to make sure he finishes the objective which is to let Zai Jin die to get the white elixir and turn into an immortal nine-tailed fox. However, Bai considers Zai Jin his only friend, so he decides to jump in the black hole to help Zai Jin. While in the black hole, Zai Jin's soul is almost destroyed by his older brother's spell while Bai is being attacked by other candidates who were trapped in the letters. While Bai's soul is being overthrown by all the other ghosts the Wuxi device tells him that the only way to solve this situation is to get Zai Jin's brother to remember his past. Wuxi tells him she can help with this and saves Bai and also makes Doran remember who he really is. But this costs Wuxi to lose her life. After, it turns out that Zai Jin's brother was a student of the academy and wanted to pass the exam his whole life. He tries to do the exam every season but continuously fails until one day he died in the exam room full of anger. This is why he takes everyone's souls if they pass the exam. After Wuxi dies, he wakes up and finally realizes who he is, and is no longer an evil ghost. He is now a good ghost, and just before their souls return back to their bodies, he warns his brother Zaijin about what he heard the Wuxi say to Bai about obtaining his elixir. At this moment, Bai and Zai Jin's souls return back to their bodies. While eating, Zai Jin forces Bai to be honest with him, and his true intentions to why he followed him all this way. And he asks Bai what an elixir is. After, Zai Jin is willing to give him his elixir as a gift for saving his life many times during their journey together. But he said he will only do this if he can help him free the beautiful ghost Yang Lion, as he wants to marry her. Later on Zai Jin is wearing a wedding outfit and proposes to Ying but she refuses and warns him that she is a ghost and a tree demon. However Zai Jin still insists that he wants to marry her which makes her flattered. She then betrays all the foxes and takes Zai Jin. But Bai was waiting for them at the other side of the bridge. Ying has good intentions and is trying to save Zai Jin from Bai. However Zai Jin doesn't seem to want to be saved as he keeps protecting the fox spirits from Ying. Unfortunately the frog demon stabs Ying in the back. The dying Ying brings Sai Jin with her and runs away. However, it's already too late to save her. Before disappearing she expresses her gratitude towards the innocent scholar. Sai Jin's heart is now broken as she was the only thing that mattered to him. While she fades away, Bai arrives there and Sai Jin blames him for her death saying he's a liar about everything. He then tells Bai to kill him and take the elixir from his body. After seeing Zai Jin hurt like this, Bai apologizes to him for everything and decides to sacrifice himself and we see his body disappear into the water. After, Bai is now teleported back to the fox spirit realm, and it is revealed to him that the tribe co-leader of the old foxes was observing him this whole time to prevent him from doing something he wasn't supposed to do. And to make sure this didn't happen he was using protection magic hidden inside Zai Jin's body. The fox leader reveals to Bai that the kid who saved him 500 years ago was Zai Jin in a previous life. And the white elixir is not the thing which occurs every 1000 years, and it was an excuse for what really occurs every 1000 years, which is a unique sacrifice for each other's lives between a fox spirit and a human who both love each other, which is what happened to Zai Jin and Bai. He explains that he was always destined to obtain the white elixir from Zai Jin because of the teardrop Bai left on Zai Jin's hand is in fact the elixir, and the leader knew that Bai would end up sacrificing himself for Zai Jin as a fox spirit in the human world. We then cut to Zai Jin after Bai had disappeared, and he's now searching everywhere for Bai, because he wants to say sorry for not believing in their friendship and his true intentions. He keeps walking until he arrives in the bamboo forest and there he sees Bai. After seeing Bai, Zai Jin says his apology and wishes for Bai to have his elixir as he knows it's the only way Bai can stay as a fox spirit because he's a half-breed and it will lead to him becoming immortal. So he sacrifices himself so Bai can have the elixir. But right after, another Bai arrives and it turns out that the Bai we just saw with Sijin was actually the co-leader. The co-leader tells Bai that the elixir inside Zai Jin is not white but black, so it is useless. In addition to this, he was told by the leader to watch over Bai to steal the white elixir once he took it from Zai Jin, and use it for himself. And as a result all of his efforts are useless. Because the co-leader deceived Zai Jin and killed him, Bai gets full of anger and starts to fight the co-leader. Because of his anger he uses his fox powers, and it seems like he's overpowering the co-leader but suddenly, the co-leader transforms into the six-tailed fox and starts to get his revenge on Bai and Bai is no match for the six-tailed fox, and to finish him off he uses one of the tails to stab him, causing him to stay lying on the ground. 
Before Bai dies, he touches Zai Jin's elixir, which made him have flashbacks of everything they went through in their journey together and immediately this changed the color of the elixir from black to white. And a beam of light shines down from the sky and went inside Bai's body, turning him into the immortal nine-tailed fox. Now Bai has the godlike powers and attacks the co-leader's six-tailed fox. While fighting, the co-leader now has trouble against Bai as he is too strong and he has no chance against the nine-tailed immortal spirit, as Bai is now the first-class fox. Bai continues to fight with the co-leader, even ripping off one of his tails, bringing him down to a five-tailed fox. At the end, he almost killed the co-leader but he remembers everything Zai Jin told him, that he would be the best among the immortal foxes and a good one. He knew Zai Jin would want him to do the right thing, so he decides to let him go. After that, we see Bai reveal the nine tails and soon fades away. We then see Zai Jin back in the bamboo forest, who has woken up, but doesn't have any memory about Bai or anything that just happened. He then goes back to his hometown to live with his grandma, and his grandmother asked him why didn't become an official after passing the imperial exam. So he told her that it's his wish to stay here and take care of his grandmother, especially now his brother is gone and that's what will make him happy. After that, his grandma said that ever since he came back he doesn't look happy, to which Zai Jin replies, saying that ever since he got back it feels like he lost something. A few days later, Zai Jin is searching to find some herbs, but there he came across an injured fox who happens to be Bai back in his original form. The movie then cuts to a scene with Bai in the forest, right after the fight with the co-leader, and it turns out that he was deeply sad to see Zai Jin lose his life. So he sacrificed his immortality as a first-class fox spirit and gave it all up so that Zai Jin could live again. The wish was granted and the thunder struck him, removing him from the spirit realm and Zai Jin was resurrected but with no memories of what happened. Zijin named the fox Zao Bai and he came to heal him, and they eat together and the story ends. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on, so you never miss a future video. And until next time guys, take care.